If you love it so much, why don't you fuck it? <laughs> what, my pumpkin? Yeah, your pumpkin. <laughs> oh, that's actually not a bad idea. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Welcome to Nine Cents. Nine Cents is a satanic perspective of our modern world, and I'm your host, Adam Campbell. And I'm being joined by the incomparable Aaron. How are you, my dear? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. You know, I listened to our last episode again, mm. uh-huh. and I felt like I was having a one-sided <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> oh, really? Because I thought I was having yeah. my own breakdown, too. So <laughs> It was weird because like, I remember in the heat of it, I was like, "Why I am so frustrated right now with this fucking recording. And then when I was done listening to it, I was like, I was acting like a douche. Like, there was nothing overtly anything. Like, it was just me freaking out. Well, and, then, mm-hmm. and then I listened to it again. I was like, well, I'm not even really freaking out that bad. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just an internal thing. I think it was all in your head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in my ears. My head and my ears. Mm-hmm. Well, we're back for another amazing episode this is, is recording th- right yeah okay was it not supposed to be no i mean last time we did that had that whole <laughs> shit am i recording <laughs> yes i'm recording uh well again october 13th uh we have a great show for you this week in the devil's advocate we're gonna be talking about misanthropia mm-hmm. misanthropia <laughs> and it's uh, an essay uh, it's dramatic it's an essay in the devil's notebook by anton zazandor love <laughs> I love your, um, your new flourishes. Yeah, this is all for Halloween. <laughs> In the Infernal Informant, Son of Sam loophole may help killer get kids cash. And moms, I don't really bathe my baby. <laughs> unleashes online firestorm. I don't really wash my baby. Am I supposed to? Oh well. I thought they were like cats. They didn't lick themselves clean. <laughs> they lick themselves clean. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, the amazing Down to the Crossroads segment, episode oh, yeah. 16. What are we calling this one? Jinx Blues. Is it because it's the 13th or is it because it's October? Dude, it's all those things and then yeah. some. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that at the tail end of the show. Um, before we get into it, as per usual, it's funny. Every once in a while I get these. Actually, it's seemingly every single damn week I'm getting new people coming in and listening to the show saying, hey, I just found the show. This is really great. I'm really enjoying it. Thanks for what you're doing. And I'm like, Pfft. Of course it is. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> it's only the greatest podcast in the world. Why do Why do um, people even waste their time? Like, I know it's telling it's just, you that it's known. You don't have to. All you have to do is say I'm listening, and I'm like, well, duh. Right? Do you just write back like <laughs> no doy? <laughs> That's all it is. Doy. <laughs> um, thanks to you, that has entered my vernacular. Um, awesome. <laughs> so I, I get these, and then it's funny because every single listener is wildly different uh some people love the devil's advocate satanism centric segments other people uh love infernal informant or they love down the crossroads or uh any of the other amazing uh contributor segments that we have on nine cents every once in a while i get someone that says and this last one said they like the entry banner banter like the back and forth before the show actually begins Oh, yeah? And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> like, this that's people are clearly broken individuals. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I genuinely appreciate it because whenever I'm setting up the shows, I anticipate the, the sort of the meat and potatoes of the show to be <laughs> in the segments and not in the intro or the outro banter. And so it's nice that even those... Uh, little pieces of this podcast are appreciated by people. And so I feel like, you know, we are doing something right by this. Hell yeah. So that's nice. Um, A little note here. Two more weeks! Two more weeks! Oh, it's only two more weeks! Oh, dear. Oh, God. (laughs) Until, Uh. well, Halloween, for one. 
Is it but, the end times? What are you so excited about? <laughs> <laughs> the Greater Magic Episode. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. And uh, it's coming up here, peeps. I hope you're ready. Uh, also Halloween, which is amazing. A couple weeks for that. I'm really excited. Yeah. We've been growing pumpkins for the last couple years, used primarily for uh, sort of dessert dishes and then for a beer. Pumpkin um, pumpkin. I've been having so much pumpkin lately. It's <laughs> crazy. We made pumpkin cookies, pumpkin pie, pumpkin oh, bread. Uh, I made pumpkin beer. I think, and, um, do you need me to resend you my address? Because I must not be getting your packages full of pumpkin cookies. <laughs> you must be getting lost in the mail. Are you a fan of pumpkin cookies? I'll eat fucking any cookie. You just a shit cookie. As long as it says cookie, I will eat it. No, I love pumpkin. Anything pumpkin is, I mean, how do you fuck up pumpkin flavor? It's I'm, true. Yeah. No. It's so. delicious. But I, I mean, it, it is getting to the point where I'm, I'm eating so much of it. All I'm thinking about is pumpkin. And then we're carving or actually we've just been drawing on our pumpkins until another week. Uh, so we can not have them rotted out by the time Halloween comes. But, you know, we're drawing on the pumpkins right now. And then we're going to be uh, carving them, uh, like I said, in a week. And so pumpkins have kind of overtaken my world at the moment. Pumpkin and we had obsessed. Gigantic ginormous gigantic monstrosity i saw a uh, picture of that thing was as big as your kid <laughs> it, was so, <laughs> it, it took uh three guys three fucking guys to get it into this wheelbarrow um, <laughs> well i say guys me and my cousin and a really old dude next door <laughs> helped like old guys wedge it into the wheelbarrow and we started like driving like i'm pushing it and my my cousin is on the other end like holding it so it doesn't tip over on the <laughs> wheelbarrow because it, it it's really like oh, having like a, a a tennis ball on a shot glass and trying to move it around the room. It's just so it, you know it's so easy to tip off. Um, and so we finally got into my house and it broke my fucking wheelbarrow. Like it completely uh -huh. crushed the bearings in in my <laughs> wheel of the wheelbarrow. And without a wheel, I just have a barrow. What the? <laughs> what, what is a barrow, a barrow? God damn it! <laughs> it's, it's just like an iron basket. I like find I, I guess like, we, wheelbarrow is one of the hardest words in the English language to say correctly. I always feel like I get mush mouth when I say wheelbarrow. I, that's, I think that's why everybody says <laughs> just says wheelbarrow, even though it, it's not a wheelbarrow at all. <laughs> What's a barrow? Where does that come? Now I'm obs now I'm obsessed with the wheelbarrow. I don't. I don't What's know, a barrow? You? It must be something, right? Ugh, crap. I think it's a. Uh, isn't it like a grave or something? Oh, fuck you. You're just making shit up now. <laughs> Why would it... Oh, a grave on, on wheels. That's what a wheelbarrow is. You gotta... See, now I'm thinking it's just spelled wrong. <laughs> it's not wheelbarrow at all. It's barrel. <laughs> I was right when I was nine. It's a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, my God. I think you're right. It's from it's Middle English. Means burial barrel? place? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You is know that, how I know that? Oh my god, you did they... fucking hobbit. <laughs> oh, you knew that. nerd. You think that's how they used to carry dead bodies to their graves? Yeah, that's why they called it wheelbarrows. It's fucking spring <laughs> out, you dead. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've, it's just been overtaking my world. So now I have this gigantic pumpkin in my front yard that I have to, like, spend some genuine time on, like, coloring up and... Do you ever um, play Tetris too much and like you saw and then you would go out in the real world and you would be like arranging cars like they were Tetris pieces? What? I can't. I'm not the only. I, I know. I, what are you talking about? Uh, OK. Have you ever heard of the game Tetris? Yes. OK. Did you ever used to play it? Yes. A lot. I, I mean, I guess as much as anyone. I don't, uh, maybe not as much as you. Well, I used to play Tetris a lot. And then when I would like be out in the real world i would still see like tetris pieces like i would make <laughs> tetris out of traffic you know and like try to like flip things to fit do you have oh anyway i know i'm not the only one who's ever this had is this is insanity oh no, it's not it's not you're crazy for never having that all right but, audience i i this is a yeah, call please. to the audience i want to know if i am crazy or if aaron is crazy this is another one of those <laughs> yeah team aaron <laughs> or team adam and which is it? Are you? Do you rearrange the world around you via Tetris, or do you not care because you're a normal person? Oh, <laughs> come on. 
anyway, the whole reason I brought that up, I was wondering if you saw like saw pumpkins everywhere, like pumpkins on people's you know bodies and or boo, you know. Any, I will now. Apparently not. You're like, oh, super sane. I'm super sane. I don't see things that aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoopity doo, Adam. <laughs> Holy shit! I forgot all about this. Ah, you, oh, you, <laughs> just what you said reminded me. I was in my backyard, uh, weed whacking, <laughs> and I heard this. <laughs> <laughs> like creepy like screeching and i'm like looking around like mm-hmm. i don't see anyone in my backyard and so i keep going and it's all, <laughs> oh god and I'm like what the fuck is that i turn around and kitty corner in the backyard of my house is a tree house and on this tree house is a figure completely clad in black black hood mm-hmm. everything no eye slots or anything and it's literally standing there staring at me pure black clothing Oh my Tilting its god. head sideways as I look at it. Oh my god. Freak me the shit That's out. That's horrifying. And so I'm like, well, it's got to be just a stupid kid just having fun. It must, you know, I, I don't know what or the hell he's doing. Or it's a fucking banshee come to <laughs> steal your so soul. So I, I tried to ignore it and I kept going. And then every <laughs> once in a while I'd hear this. And I'd look up and it tilt its head sideways. Oh, fuck that. And like, this was 10 minutes you, and you didn't bother to put the weed whacker down and go investigate? Well, I was staring at him. Like, I was, I could, I have a straight line view of sight, and, and he's just looking at me, and I'm looking up at him, and he's making these crazy screechy sounds. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be that weird old guy that's yelling at little kids. But then <laughs> I'm like, this little kid's like fucking Michael Myers in the training. Right. Like, who does that? He just stands there 10 minutes freaking me out. <laughs> and like, I'm not showing that I'm freaked out. I'm totally ignoring it. But inside my head, I'm he screaming goes. around... Arms flailing in the sky. The it shape. He's in your head. He knows he's fucking with you. <laughs> it was, I, too. I would have run over there with the weed whacker and cut <laughs> off the legs. <laughs> oh, this is Get funny. Get down there! Whoever <laughs> is this funny to you? <laughs> it was so... It was creepy. Like, I... I love horror movies, and so I'm sort of yeah. Like, it's easy for me to get lost and stuff like that. Oh yeah. And if he if he would have stopped after like a minute or two minutes or five minutes, it wouldn't have had the impact. But he fucking owned. He was dedicated. I yeah. love that. It was Selling it. Shit. Um, I still would have fucking killed him. <laughs> I would. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have one more announcement here about Down to the Crossroads. Mm-hmm. Um, we are no longer going to be airing Down to the Crossroads. Oh, womp womp. <laughs> okay, so we are going to continue. Uh, we're just going to do it in a different way. So I've I've been contacted by uh, a number of musical providers that have said that we are stealing their music what about by your airing it. Suckers? And I would, I would get it if we weren't using it under the fair rights usage. By yeah. definition, yeah. Uh, legally, uh, you are allowed to play licensed music if... Mm-hmm. You are commenting on it or reviewing it. And that's the totally sole point of this doing. segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because they can be assholes if they want and they can still take you to court and fight it, even if you're going to win, I yeah. can't afford the fight. Right. So we have to adjust the way we do this. So it's going to be um, very much set up where I'm going to embed playlists in the website for each episode. And I'm assuming Erin is going to be uh, sharing the playlists via her social networking uh, page down to the crossroads on Facebook and hopefully Twitter and everywhere else. If, if you We'll are. see if I feel like it. All right. But <laughs> w- the, ideally what's going to happen is you're going to listen to the segment and then play those while you're listening. And so it's going to be this really great experience of you getting the crisp, clean version of that song. Plus... A first-hand access to it, which you didn't have before. So hopefully this ends up being better for you in the long run, where you get to enjoy the music with our uh, wonderful commentary and Aaron's wonderful uh, information <laughs> and review. But now you have literally at your fingertips to play anytime you want and stuff. So, you know, hopefully that's going to end up benefiting everyone and getting these fucking <laughs> assholes off my back. What is up with these assholes? Mm-hmm. Seriously. <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, other than that, do you have anything you want to discuss this? Us, 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 us? No. Us, us, us? I just want to talk about what you want to talk about, Adam. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. All right, let's jump in the devil's advocate. In nominated in Austria's Thomas Luciferi Excelsior. In the name of Satan, the ruler of the earth, the king. Though 
I am an active member, I do not speak for the Church of Satan. H.L. Mencken said, I reserve the right to be a lonely man. I don't crave companionship. It stands in my way. I live for pleasure. There are few persons who can give me as much pleasure as those acts I perform myself. I would rather create pleasure according to my own whim than be subjected to whims of others. Invariably, I wind up entertaining others or educating them. There is no push-pull. It is only pull, and they do the pulling. I find greater companionship in inert figures, animals, and speechless artifacts, for I can enjoy their presence and there is no psychic drain. In fact, by their very stimulation in accordance with my tailored ideals, they provide me with not only entertainment, but food for thought. (laughs) (laughs) Turn the page. (laughs) That's good. Okay, so, uh, are you uh, a misanthrope? Aaron? Of course, of <laughs> the highest order. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for anyone who hasn't read that essay and doesn't know what a misanthrope is, it's an individual who dislikes humankind and kind of just shuns them, avoids human society as a whole. Uh, and Anton LaVey was very much one of those individuals, and arguably you can say a portion of that comes within yourself, and then some of it comes from the way other people just are. <laughs> not wanting to be around that. People so are it's, awful. It's, it's a push pull, and they're doing yes. the pulling. So true. I couldn't help but think of something sexual when you said that. Oh, um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm like twelve. What do you want? Uh, I I have a uh, I have a couple issues with this this concept because Ooh. I myself detest mankind. I I cannot <laughs> help but really dislike. Um, what what could be referred to as just the herd, um, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that I withdraw myself from it entirely. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. there's things that you still have to do with interactions. So, Aaron, do you think that in, in some aspect, uh, there's no such thing as a true misanthrope unless you're li- living like a cabin in the woods, <laughs> <laughs> like somewhere on the Asperger's spectrum, where you just don't. <laughs> need or understand people i don't know i think there's you know misanthropy is just sort of a dislike of mankind right like if you want to get literal in the term but you know i mean people need social interaction people need people you know and and you know dr levey was the same way of course he had real life companions as well as his sort of android companions but you know he had very intimate loving relationships we all do and we all need them uh so it's not about necessarily being a, like a shut-in or a loner. It's about, you know, sort of uh, being realistic about the human race and how 99.999% of the human race is expendable and sort of worthless and nothing but a drain on your resources. <laughs> um, but there are those, you know, the select few, you know, you know, instead of wasting your love on ingrates, it's, you know, Loving the people that are important to you. And I, we all do that. Your children, you love them. They're people, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> I guess they are people. For the most part. Yeah, most of the time, they're people-ish. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, you just it's about being selective. I think. I don't think, you know, you can hate mankind and love individual people. And I think that's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, this idea resonates completely throughout, as, as do, do many of the ideas that, that are a part of, of Satanism. But this idea resonates throughout all of, of what being a Satanist is. It's, it's championing the individual and not the, the group or the herd. Uh, in this particular essay, Anton LaVey seemed to really uh, take it as an opportunity to talk about the idea of artificial human companionship sure. as a stand-in for the human need, just, I don't know if it's a genetic or psychological need of, of having other people around you, mm-hmm. but that's where having artificial human companions is the ideal scenario if you really cannot stand uh, the masses out there. And there's good reason not to like the masses other than just having a wildly inflated ego and thinking you're better than everyone else. I mean, there's... Right. <clears throat> Look at the news literally any day of the week and you will see what kind of trash Mm. we have produced as a species. Um, We talk about many of those people in this very show, actually. Um, But just interpersonal relationships where people literally are just using you. And and one little note that I thought was very interesting about this um, idea is that, you know, he's saying that he, he doesn't need other people. It's other people that are coming to him 
and, mm. and trying to take things from him and putting him on this pedestal. He never once asked to, uh, you know, to be worshipped in any way. I, and, and there is, I think, a very important distinction between wanting to codify something that a lot of people resonate with and wanting to be seen as a king or uh, this cult leader. Right. You know, that, that was not what he was about. And that's not what being a powerful Satanist is about. Uh -huh. um, and so I thought it was really interesting that he took that. Um, it, it's very easy to just be flippant about the idea and, and not to, you know, back anything up with specifics, uh, examples of your own life. And this is what we try to do without throughout this show is, is give personal, mm -hmm. relatable stories to these, these aspects of Satanism. And, 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 you know, hands down, this whole concept comes from, you know, Anton LaVey doing it and, and where, you know, we will never be as good or clear or as, as clean of a message. We don't have to be, and, and that's okay. He's got the information out there in, in these tomes like the, the Devil's Notebook mm -hmm. in this particular case, or the Satanic Bible, which you should all obviously read so. <clears throat> and filter yourself out if you're not one. <laughs> but it, you can still interact with the world. You can still um, understand that at some point in your life, you're going to have to get along with at least one other human being <laughs> who you don't want to. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're trading in who you are. It just means you're a realist. And that's its core of what a Satanist is. So right. we're, we're looking for the betterment of ourselves. And if that means that you're literally just surrounding yourself with dolls or if you're literally just surrounding yourself with mannequins, or if it's just a stuffed pillow that you drew a smiley face on. <laughs> um, uh, am I the only one that did that? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. it, it looks like a Tetris block, though. Oh, go so. to hell. <laughs> <laughs> go to hell. Uh, but, but that's okay. You know, you, it's, it's very easy to... And I guess my point of, of this entire diatribe here is... <clears throat> it, it's just to express that just because you identify as a misanthrope or you identify as a Satanist it doesn't mean that you, there's some weird rule that goes along with that saying that you can never do this or you can never do that. Mm -hmm. We're not tied down by our, by definitions. We, we use these uh, concepts to help, to really help cultivate our human experience, not mm -hmm. to slow us down or not to cut us off from experience. That's, I think, the most important thing to take away. Yeah, and you know, um, when we do find somebody who, who we think is worthy of our love and time and effort, then it's that much more special because yeah. we hate everyone else. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I feel that way. I those are my people, you know, people who don't like people generally. So yeah. when they do like me and when I like them back, then that's really fucking special. I know people who are just these, uh, you know, they're like golden retrievers. They just fucking love everyone. And you're like, yes. really? like no sense of discernment whatsoever. You're just this egalitarian with your affection and, and, and time. Like, don't you have any filter of who you'll let into your life? Like I, you know, I have very few close friends and I much prefer that, you know, and it's not just because I'm a misanthrope. It's because I, you know, I feel like I have standards and I feel like those relationships that you form with people who you find worthy and they in turn find you worthy are so much more important and meaningful and solid than just having a bunch of fucking people that you don't like that much in, in your life. I, I, I don't, I've never understood that way of living and I never will. <laughs> yeah. And I think in, in some measure, it's just trying to make up for something you're lacking when Certainly, you just yeah. surround yourself by, by tons of people. That, and this is actually something he speaks to, too, that I, I sort of slipped in my head. <clears throat> it's that in order to be a worthwhile companion or a worthwhile human being, you have to be one and whole within yourself. And if you are feeling so inadequate within yourself that you have to latch on to other people to somehow fill up that other half of, half of you, well, then you're not a human being and you have nothing to offer. Yeah. You, you know, we play with this idea often on this podcast, um, and, and I don't know, maybe maybe directly within the world as well, of, of this idea of, of self-actualization. But 
you know, you can really just distill it down to being okay with who you are. Right. It's not it's not everyone trying to reach the Superman status. Mm-hmm. It's you accepting your strengths and weaknesses and definitely yeah. and just living with that and being okay. And if you if there's something you want to work on, then you do it. But you don't do it because you feel like you have to reach some pinnacle or something. Right. It's all that for seems you. To be a big fall, but yeah. It's so we we have to keep that in mind as individuals as well. I mean, you, there's no way that you will be of benefit to anyone in this planet if you do not have a sense of self. And yeah. and you can't just be alone at times. I mean, that's that's a shortcoming. Yeah, absolutely. needing other people. So we also have to keep that in mind too. So um, I thought that was interesting as he put it up. So definitely check out the Devil's Notebook. Read. Um, read the essay. It's like page 139, Misanthropia. And as with anything Angel Neve wrote, it's thought provoking and it's fun to read. So (laughs) check it out. Here we go. Hey, what's going on, Flash? Uh, in front of the Get out of the truck. You're out there. So, a son of Sam loophole may help killer get kids cash. This is uh, from the Associated Press by Frank Eltman, published on October 13th. Hey, that's today. (laughs) All right. It's the hallmark of New York's son of Sam law and others like it across the nation. Convicted criminals should not be able to profit from their crimes. But legal experts say the case of the Long Island mother who drowned her three children in a bathtub is now seeking cash and is now seeking cash in... Could am I retarded? What is <laughs> that, no, that is fucked up writing. <laughs> what okay. the hell? You guys get the gist. Okay, since we which, could write for the Associated Press, oh my apparently, god, because Frank Eltman doesn't know how to fucking write. Hey, <laughs> Frank, I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> All right, um, since Latrice Brewer was never convicted, instead found not guilty by reason of mental disease, legal experts say she could make a plausible case to receive some of her child's. $350,000 estate. The Brewer case is a novel circumstance, said George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley. The facts do seem to place her outside the scope of the law, although that does not mean that there could not be other barriers to her recover- recovering from the estate of her children. Brewer, 33, slashed her daughter's throat before drowning her and two younger brothers in 2008, believing she was saving them from death. The deadly effects of voodoo. Hours, oh, I love that shit. Hours after the killings, she survived two suicide attempts, swallowing a concoction of home cleaning fluids, and later jumping out a second story window. A so second she, story window. Good job, dum dum. <laughs> She's fucking wicked half ass. Oh, fucking weird. Unbelievable. All right, so yeah, we. Stop there, I think, right? This so basically what they're saying is because of this loophole, I'm not even sure what the loophole is. Are you just oh I do. Uh because she was not she wasn't found guilty, she was found crazy instead. Yeah. So in that therefore she's a she's maybe uh eligible to receive some of her kids' estate. First of all, what fucking children have a three hundred fifty thousand dollars estate? I, don't I was that. wondering that myself. I was like, when my possible? when my parents died, neither one of them had a thirty five dollar estate. So where do these fucking three kids get three hundred fifty thousand dollars? Is that anyway? We may never know that, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are saying that even if she succeeded in claiming this money, she would never actually see it because I, she has this. One point two million dollar <laughs> lien against her psychiatric counseling services, mm-hmm. um, but who is this? Who is this serving? Like, yeah, no one. There was <laughs> her original trial mm-hmm. that the taxpayers paid for. Then there's her stay that the taxpayers are paying for, and now right. there's this trial uh, to see if she can actually get money that the taxpayers are paying for. Yeah. And meanwhile, she literally murdered three of her children. Yeah. Because she was afraid of voodoo. Yeah, <laughs> kind awesome. of a fucking. W- this is why we're missing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. These I, fucking people. Okay. <laughs> um, insane. One hundred percent insane. I don't understand why this is even an option. Why we give convicted one? Okay, one. Uh, uh, she she was a murderer. Yeah. But 
she was seen as mentally deficient, and so she didn't have to, uh, you know, go through that, uh, you know, see prison or, or see a de- the death sentence. Mm-hmm. But do we see it as a society to owe mentally deficient people? Like, why are we treating them better? I don't understand. I think once you kill someone, <laughs> you forfeit every fucking human right that you ever had, right? I mean, that's pretty much how we usually operate. Just because someone's crazy? Well, I, I've never understood this, and I may never understand how that absolves someone from not... I mean, obviously, she's... she's um being penalized in some way, right? I mean, she's not just free, like, roaming around, like, having more kids and murdering them. But we didn't kill her, which is what we wanted to do, right? Normally, we would have have just sent her to death. Is that... I think so, yeah. In this, where is she, New if York? she was convicted. I mean, in New right. York. I don't, I don't think New York does that, do they? I think they're a little more liberal. Yeah, they are, because they were the first ones to enact this Son of Sam law. Yeah. Which is, which is great. I think, yeah, of course, they shouldn't be able to um, benefit from... I, right, the Son of Sam law is you, you're not supposed to be able to benefit from... from Like, you can't sell the story of yeah. the crime and make money off it. That's basically, right, how, I think, how the, what that means. But, um, yeah, she shouldn't get any fucking money from her kid's estate. I don't know. I mean, there must be the, the father, right, that, that, that deserves that money, you know, more than she does, for sure. Or, yeah, or the next living relative, or it just stays in a trust for the children. I, I'm, I'm well done. They well, they're dead, it, but, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> when so they I come back, when Jesus <laughs> yeah. returns. When, yeah, right, when they're resurrected, like. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> so retarded. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. You know, but I think, it, yeah, we'll go to the father, right? I, I'm pretty sure. So is she really like. Yeah, like, with the grandparents, but yeah. Yeah, whoever is whoever is supposed to get that, or no or, one. Or hey, let's just let the state <laughs> absorb it because we're fucking paying right. for it anyway. Let her fucking yeah go toward her bail, but not even no, not that she'll ever pay. Her. Whatever, we're just <laughs> right. talking this in complete hypothesis now. Worst, <laughs> <laughs> the worst. I should never have chosen this. Um, it, no, 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 I think I, it's I, I choose these um, these articles because I. I would like us to not only comment on them, but also to give solid examples to people out there. This is the, this is the rest of the world. This is what people are like out there. And it's easy to say, well, no, this is just the one story, except that I've been doing this for three years, and every week I have a new fucking story like this. So this is the best we got, people. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is normal. Everyone who's not going out doing crazy, stupid shit, well, that's not normal. Um, I'm starting to think that way, and it's really making me want to withdraw even that much more from <laughs> society as a whole. I just have so little trust in anyone else nowadays. I, it's like walking. Uh, I was uh, at, at a soccer game. My kids are both in soccer this year again um, for fall soccer, I guess. Hmm. And the one of the sort of rec center, I guess they're uh, – he acts as a goalie, but he's, he's, I don't know if they're volunteer or if they're paid for it or what, but he was like walking next to my daughter, talking to her. And I was like in full aggressive dad right. mode. Like, why the <laughs> fuck is this grown ass man talking to my little girl? Is he a fucking rapist? Is he yeah, a, he's pedophile? a pedophile? Is he's for like, sure there's something genuinely wrong with this. And so I have to, you know, go step up there and say, Hey, stay over here, Erica. <laughs> you need to go, you know, take care of your game or something. <laughs> like, right. You don't talk to my little girl. That's not right. And I I feel like I should this, feel I, yeah. I'm overreacting, but with everything that's out there, I don't think mm-hmm. I am overreacting. It's weird. Well, it's too bad. I mean, that's just the way the world is now. Like, pedophiles have ruined it for everyone. You know, we just can't have normal... You know, there was a time when grown men could talk to little girls alone on the street, and it wasn't that big a fucking deal, but... You know, now there's pedophiles. We all know that they exist and they prey on children. So we just, you know, we can never let our guards down, unfortunately. Yeah. Thanks, pedophiles. Thanks a lot. Fucking ruin everything. Fucking terrible. (laughs) I can never have a conversation with an underage girl again. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. Without feeling like a sicko. God. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's do this next one here. All right. This is from that pinnacle of news, National Monitor. (laughs) <laughs> mom's I don't really bathe my baby claim <laughs> unleashes online firestorm I really bathe uh, my baby <laughs> this is from Lance Tilson October 12th 
Yep. yep. Total conf- <laughs> Hold on. Total <laughs> confession time. I really don't bathe my baby, Claire Gross wrote on Babel. <laughs> Perfect. Not gross, but Goss. Uh, yeah. So how long has Goss gone without... This is like a Dr. Seuss book already. How long <laughs> has Goss I'll gone without in. bathing her baby? <laughs> oh, confess that I have gone longer than a week, Goss recently told Good Morning America. Had her three-month-old son, Charlie, <laughs> been her first baby, she would probably bathe them more often. But with two other children, she just doesn't have the time. Who has with time first- these days to bathe their babies anymore? <laughs> with my first baby, they just lick themselves clean like cats anyway. I, that's what I always assumed. <laughs> with my first baby bath time was part of her bedtime routine, wrote the mother of three. But this third baby gets a clean diaper, NPJs, a boob, and it's Betty by time. I thought it I would be happy with that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I thought it said BJ. <laughs> I was like, Wait a minute. If we can add things, I mean, yeah. can Adam have a BJ the, as well as BJ's in the poop? In the poop. Betty by time. The Daily Mail reports that her first child received daily baths, but doctors told her that her second child's skin was drying out from too many baths, so she cut back on the number of tub experiences. <laughs> tub so, experience. That's definitely euphemism, right? That is so for molestation. <laughs> So how often should you bathe the baby? According to the Mayo Clinic, there's no reason to bathe your baby every day. In fact, the Mayo Clinic notes that giving your baby a bath more than a couple times a week can dry out his or her skin. That's what they the make Mayo fucking Clinic. lotion for, isn't it? <laughs> it Sorry, I'll let you finish. Technically. The real areas that you need to be that need to be cleaned on a daily basis are the face, neck, and diaper area. Those areas or, are readily as- taken care of with cloth and diapers. Sorry, I keep. I'm sorry. I can't even get through this. I know uh, you let me read mine full on, and I'm being an asshole. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Goss found that the Mayo Clinic's advice was all she needed to be confident that she was doing the right thing for her child. This makes total sense to me. Goss wrote. Oh, I got to do my grandma's voice. It's not like she's touching every filthy thing he can find, or running around like sweating a lot. So spot cleaning should be pretty sufficient. That's my mom's voice. (laughs) The Daily Mail notes that not every Babbel user was impressed with Goss's bath time routine. What the fuck is Babbel? I have no idea. Some bullshit for moms, I guess. Some even called Goss gross. Huh. And (laughs) lazy. Totally. (laughs) How often do you bathe your children? (laughs) Should Goss bathe her child more frequently? Is it any of your business? Or our business? Or their business? No. Share your thoughts, experiences, and opinions in the government. I just fucking promoted the stupid website. Um, so what I do you like, think, Erin? Uh, well, I, I, I Lady I with no children. I know. Yeah. I subscribe to the George Carlin theory of hygiene. Same and course. that is armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. That's all you really need to watch on a daily basis. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Even if you're a baby. I mean, especially if you're a baby. I mean, what are yeah. babies doing that is so fucking disgusting? Like, they're, they're just... They're clean little sterile things. Unless you're rolling them around in shit, I think it's probably okay not to bathe them. I mean, are they? Do babies sweat? Is that something babies even do? Do they have pores? I don't even think babies have pores. Of any. They have pores. <laughs> they definitely have pores. Okay. I get to go out of your way to make your baby sweat. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome if you made your baby get on that baby treadmill <laughs> get a little like or you get no boob like a plastic bag clothing so they can just lose <laughs> those extra baby fat pounds you know how bit fat babies are that's the next yeah, thing it's do. not just childhood obesity but baby obesity that's gonna be the next epidemic <laughs> oh, baby geez. fat she was a total of nine pounds fatty <laughs> um I okay. I I have two kids, and we did not bathe our kids every single day. It was a wash thing, very much what like you were saying with uh, George Carlin, where we took care of the areas that were necessary. But <clears throat> you know, we're being raised, and we're raising our children in an era of no germ contact. Well, and if, that if, if, is if I can horrible. quote, <laughs> if I can quote George Carlin again, he said. You know, when he was growing up in New York, he was he used to swim in the Hudson River. He was tempered in liquid shit. And I think that's <laughs> part of the problem with today's youth is all this uh like hand sanitizer and shit like that. Like that's why so many kids have fucking asthma and fucking peanut allergies. Like 
what happened to our children? Why are they such fragile, you know, babies these days? <laughs> you know, we didn't. <clears throat> I, it, I think why, a lot of it. Our does. babies are a bunch of pussies, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think. It, I mean, it really does come down to advertising. So. Mm. You know, in in the late 1800s, we started advertising the concept of soap much more, and we literally defined as a species the role of a woman through advertising, which is an amazing concept in and of mm-hmm. itself. But then Johnson Johnson is a perfect example where they took it and ran with it and convinced people that you had to clean yourself every single day. It was the only way that you would be pure, and you have to wash your hair every single day, mm-hmm. even when science. Flies in the face of that mm-hmm. advertising money-based statement, mm-hmm. people still believe it, and they it's it just become this cultural norm. And there are real, genuine drawbacks to it. Yeah. Our health is getting worse. Our we are be, not growing the t- the tolerances to just typical normal bacteria that we have in the past, and mm-hmm. so we're a sicker society, which means mm-hmm. it's this vicious cycle where we have to. Uh, make more pills and then take more pills and have more side effects and then to get more mm-hmm. pills to take care of those side effects and mm-hmm. it's it, and it's all because we're we're hyper aware of this crazy idea of a germ yeah and it's like shampoo one, and conditioner you know well in my opinion yeah exactly in my opinion there's not a whole lot of a difference between fearing voodoo mm-hmm. and fearing a germ we're built in order to deal with it. Like that is right. that is how we have survived as human species is because we can fight germs and disease. That that's what we do. That's how we roll, peeps. <laughs> so don't act like it's some horrible thing you have to wash away. And like this lady who's just <laughs> taking care of her kid just fine. Yeah. And, and as if it's your business in the first place. But mm-hmm. to the point, she's doing that baby more of a service. Than anyone out there washing their kids three times a day and, and yeah. drowning them in Purell. Absolutely. There is literally no benefit to doing that. So, and you're actually just hurting them. Yeah, I mean, we survived this long without fucking Johnson and Johnson and, How is you know. Possible? Hmm? How is that even possible? Yeah. This is so dumb. And, and yeah. people are so, and I get it. If it's your first kid, you are oh, much I'm sure. more yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. Like, oh, don't touch anything don't breathe don't don't that's, talk near my child your breath that's why uh, i don't have you, kids <laughs> <laughs> there's a natural panic that you know you sort of think constantly you're just living in this this hype it's like when you're getting in a fight that adrenaline that's how you mm-hmm. are as a parent during those first few months or years sounds awful and it's good it's a natural reaction <laughs> because you're protecting your child you have yeah. to you know, it's an innate thing you have to do. You have to experience. But that doesn't mean you react that way. You know, it, I would hope not. Yeah. You have to be able to, you have to be able to separate your panic from reality. Oh. And as a parent, it's <laughs> more important than anything else because it's not just you you're affecting. It's your child. So, so it's tr- crazy and insane that people are freaking out about one, something that they have literally no immediate connection with. But two, that she's actually helping her kids and you're not and she's the bad guy it's it's weird well, no one ever really yeah in the mirror i mean it's other moms who are upset like i people like me i don't give a shit baby your baby yeah. or don't i don't fucking care but it's other moms and you know they it's probably first time moms who are most upset and you know it's, they look at this woman and they're like but wait you're not panicking like i'm panicking <laughs> this must be wrong stone. You know, and it's just jealousy and whatever. They want to be that fucking, like, laid back and unpanicked, but they see this, you know, so I I really don't think you need to worry about this, especially other people don't need to worry about this woman's baby. Like, he's not rolling around in his own feces and eating it. You know, who gives a shit? Who Mm, gives a shit? Feces cookie. Please. I'll give you my address <laughs> off there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to bring it up just for that, that, that sort of parent discussion and, and it carries through not just in the, the infancy stage of the baby, but oh God. to the helicopter parent mentality. 
where you're always hovering over your kid and, and you're never letting them really own their own choices and um, failures. And that's Absolutely. an important role. That, that It's hugely important as a, a human being developing, learning what's right and wrong because of success and failure, not because, well, dad said no. Yeah. Mom said no. So we, we have to realize that children are not our property, that mm. we do not own them, and they are different human beings from you entirely. You're just supposed to keep them alive and do your best to steer them in a good direction, <clears throat> but you have to let them take control and not freak out and ruin their life by overexposing them to cleaning products because you think those cleaning chemicals are all that good for them? Yeah, Which rude. is better, a little bit of dirt or a little cleaning chemical? And I would fucking guarantee in any case, dirt is going to be better. <laughs> I mean, fuck, that's why I wash in dirt. Me too. Mud bath. Ah, right, there you will. Sure you won't stay out in this blackout? Sure is dark tonight. Thank you for the ride, sir. I think I'll be fine. See yourself. What are you doing out here? Oh, I'm, I'm headed down to the crossroads. <laughs> Wait, miss. You can't be. You're the, you're the devil. devil. But you're, you're beautiful. beautiful. Just sign here. Oh my God. Hey. Hi. I went down to the crossroads. Hey everybody! <laughs> I'm I'm pretending I'm like a DJ. Hey everybody! It's down to the crossroads. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Down uh, to the crossroads. Woo! Yeah. All right. So it's October, <laughs> my favorite time of the year. <laughs> it's just, can you please not do that anymore? I'm sorry. It's in my head. Did, so you never, like, figured out what was going on? No, it was a crazy kid who was trying to freak me out, and he totally did. He totally did. He won. He owned me. I was his on. bitch. <laughs> right. So I picked three songs to talk about today around the theme of the jinx. What is the jinx? So, you know, a jinx. Like, when you cast a sort of curse on someone so that they mm, fall. Like voodoo. Like voodoo. Like hoodoo and voodoo. It's, um, it's, all, it's almost, you know, it's not quite wishing them, like, horrible luck, but it's sort of like you take their luck from them, which is such a great idea. So it's different than that, you know, jinx, you owe me a Coke jinx. Just yeah. for, the, for the record, that's something else. That's what I thought it was at first. I was like, are they just saying the same thing at the same time? <laughs> Jinx. <a> Coke? <laughs> no, this okay. is different. So I'm going to play this. This is, you know, all right, I'm going to hit play right now. What do you think? Pretty good? Uh, this sounds pretty badass. <laughs> mm. So Sunhouse, everybody's um, favorite barely functioning alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me say really quick, if I may. Uh, you can listen to this track with us if you go to the website, 9centspodcast.com, and check out the Down the Crossroads page, or check out the link that's probably going to be on the Down the Crossroads Facebook page. It's going to be all over the internet. This is badass. Yeah. So, poor Sunhouse. He's just... This man has literally been jinxed. He's a... Well, I mean, he... Arguably, he did this to himself. He was very much an alcoholic, very much down on his luck, pretty much all the time. But, um, you know, I kind of wanted to talk more about the general idea of jinx and hoodoo and voodoo, because it is Halloween time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you ever jinxed someone? No. Really? Really. Hmm. Have you? I think, I think, oh, hell yeah. I think the major <laughs> point of, of casting a jinx, yeah. a lot of this has, you know, a lot to do with lesser magic. Um, of course, yeah. This that's... concept <laughs> is you're literally going up to them and 
if you know it's some old school black and white, then you're making some weird eye or sign with your hand, and you're letting them know that you just jinxed <laughs> them. Yeah, and that that is the end of your participation in the scenario because they will take that idea and like that kid standing on the corner mm -hmm. treehouse hut. Making those crazy sounds, he all he did was stand there, and yep. I'm the one that allowed that shit to happen. You filled in the blanks. Yeah, he jinxed me, mm -hmm. and I was feeling it with his screeching, <laughs> terrible sounds and his crazy cockeyed head. So yeah, I've I've totally jinxed people, and mainly, honestly, uh, it was younger, you know, younger Adam, not Grandpa Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Where I just, I, I felt like I had this sense of entitlement and other people, whenever they didn't conform, mm -hmm. you know, I'd go out of my way to, to make them pay in one way or another. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, so I guess that brings up a good point. Do you think that, because often whenever you see a jinx in a movie or you mm -hmm. hear about it in a story, the person jinxing someone else usually is trying to set right bad behaviors or something like that. Yeah. Um. In my case, I was doing it to be the aggressive person trying to just write something for myself. Do you think is is there a is there a broad context to that that pe like a rule that goes along with that? No, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I think that no, you can jinx anyone and at any time, <laughs> and it's just a way of sort of directing anarchy. Jinxes yeah. everywhere. Jinx. You get a jinx and you get a jinx, you know, <laughs> arbit chair. arbitrary jinxing. It's what the kids are doing now instead of math. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's, um, hey, you have to let me know when the song's finished because. Oh, I'm done. Oh, word. Okay. So, yeah, that was Sunhouse. How do you like that? <laughs> I, I really did, um, though I think we may have ruined it. No, it was, <laughs> it was a very nice. Uh, mellow. I didn't listen to the lyrics, and I didn't allow you to explain anything. So. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Everyone knows Sunhouse. I mean, he's one of the greats. We, he's been on the show before. I've talked about him at ad nauseum. So I didn't really want to talk about Sunhouse this time. I kind of wanted to, you know, explore the idea of, of Jinx and how it relates to Satanism and how it relates to... You know, like you made the parallel between lesser magic, and I think that's really what I, all I wanted to talk about was the parallels we can draw. Um, but Sunhouse, I mean, I know I say it every time, but he's a fucking legend, and he's one of the best. So yeah, and you can really just get that from listening to him. I mean, there's this, oh yeah, there's this cadence in his in his voice and in in his uh, guitar, I and mean, it's. It's almost hypnotizing. He, it? yeah, he is, you know, and, and like I said, he, he's a very, um, deeply alcoholic man. <laughs> and, and oftentimes when he's singing and playing, you can sort of hear it. I don't know if you've had the, um, intimate relationships you, that I've had with alcoholics, but they all kind of are cut from the same cloth. You know, you can almost, I growing up. Um, with an alcoholic in the family, I can almost always pick one up. You know, there's a different, and I've you know I've said this before. I think on the show, like there's a difference between people who like to get drunk and alcoholics. I mean, there's almost like a like a smell that come out comes off alcoholics. But Sunhouse was the. Is it alcohol? It's different. It's like the. Uh, <laughs> it's um you know the way they metabolize alcohol is different. I swear to you. I know it sounds <laughs> like like woo, but. I swear to you, there alcoholics have a smell that only children of alcoholics can sniff out. Whoa! <laughs> no, I know, but um, <laughs> but Sonas is great, and you can hear it in his his recordings, and you know he's almost always like sort of a little bit off the beat. You know, he's almost a little um, off time, and he's almost a little constantly slurring his words, and you know it's almost. I don't want to encourage alcoholism, <laughs> but Sunhouse really sort of made an art out of being drunk <laughs> and, wow. and just like made um, almost a new genre of blues, <laughs> like, the, like the drunken blues where he, you know, he didn't really give a shit about time signatures. He didn't give a shit about the right notes at the right time. It was just about him feeling it and sort of getting into that, um, you know, getting into the music and making himself part of the song. And I think that song 
sort of expresses that to some degree. And then um, there are a lot of other somehow songs that sort of personify that idea a little bit more. But uh, I, I, he he does an amazing job, uh, and you can't help when you listen to it to just be drawn into it unless you're like us and we just blabber <laughs> over everything. Um, I do like this idea though. Um, about Halloween, uh, mm-hmm. the darkest of months, and the suggestions that we have over other people. Mm-hmm. I would like to make, I would like to make a challenge to everyone out there listening. Um, arguably, this could just be for our own fun, mm-hmm. but um, I challenge you to jinx someone this month. Ooh. I don't need to Diabolical. hear about the details. <laughs> so if you're interested in sharing them, awesome, but. It's. I think it's an interesting exercise of control, and <laughs> I don't know. Does that does that application ruin the jinx? I mean, this is a good scientific experiment. <laughs> it's oh, science. Scientific. Let's get out there and jinx someone, and let's see if openly knowing that it's just an experiment, if it still has the same effect on that individual. <laughs> Find some reason. Someone burns your coffee or. Or they put out a cigarette next to your fucking shoe. Or, or, I don't know, they poke you in the butthole. Whatever the reason. (laughs) And (laughs) you're not into that. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so that doesn't make any sense because everyone's into that. So rather than that, let's just say they poke you in the eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or they stand in the damn corner. I guarantee you if I see that kid without his hood, it is on. Oh, I can't fucking on. On that. <laughs> he, he thought he scared me with the blacks. He's going to have Grandpa Adam chasing his ass with a weed whacker. Oh, shit. Or my chainsaw. I'm going to go full-blown evil dead on his ass. Full leather face on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the season. So everyone has some horrible human being because we live in the world and uh-huh. they're fucking abundant. We are never in short supply. <laughs> Jinx someone this month. And... I- Mm. Keep an eye on it. See what happens. See if... Uh, do you think anything would? Mm. Yeah, definitely. So for you... <laughs> I'm um, a true you, believer. Have you... Uh, have you, you said you were not a, a jinxer. You've never jinxed anyone? Uh, not recently. I mean, probably. In some um, very unofficial capacity, maybe. <laughs> so do you think... <laughs> You're just walking down the street. Jinx on you, you and fuck you and fuck you. <laughs> That's basically how I handle shit. <laughs> okay, so in your in your experience of jinxing, mm-hmm. your very mild manner jinxing, um, <laughs> is there any follow up to that? Is it literally just you you unleash said jinx and it's all? Well, I think it or all. Do you have to I, do you know, it's hard to tell because it's a, it's such a like life is so long. <laughs> that you can't tell like there are peaks and valleys so when you know usually i hope that i do wish death upon my ex-boyfriend um and but right now he seems to be doing well but i know eventually he's gonna die <laughs> he's gonna slip up. <laughs> and that brings me great great peace <laughs> <laughs> that someday this fucking prick is gonna die well, that's romantic. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> Let's do this next song. All right. This one, we're all playing Old Black yeah. Cat Blues by oh, Kokomo. great. Yeah, Kokomo Arnold. I don't think I've talked about Kokomo before. No. He's from, uh, where is he from? Georgia, right? Man. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. It's great. I mean, there's no dearth of dearth, dearth of great blues music out there that you have never heard. No, Old I black don't. cat blues. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> so this is I kind believe. of a the idea of uh, instant karma. Maybe he says, "Lord, if I win on Friday, please Saturday night, I'm sure to lose." <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a sort of the idea that there is a balance in the world, that all good things come with a cost and all good, you know, all shit's bound to get better if you're down in the dumps. I, you know, don't believe that. I think the universe is 
uncaring, doesn't give a shit about you. There's no such thing as karma. You're going to, you know, but I do believe that you kind of reap what you sow, if you will. You know, if you're constantly doing harm to other people, that's just going to come back to you at some point. That That's funny because that is the definition of karma. Right. Well, instant karma. Then there's like the whole car, like Buddhist karma that just lasts like past, you know, li- several lives later, you yeah, something happens. But, but fairy tales. yeah, the idea of instant karma is that what you, you know, reap, you must sow or, so, you know, something like that. Maybe I'm mixing my metaphors here, mixing Christianity <laughs> and Buddhism. But, <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but the idea is the same, is that, um, you know, what goes around comes around. Shit like that. See, I don't, I don't know that I even see it like that. I, I think, because when you say it like that, it's almost as if there's something out there that's going to make it happen. And what well, I think is people who who do horrible things bring that shit mm-hmm. onto themselves right. throughout their behavior. And so, because you're perpetuating a negative lifestyle, right. you're the one. You're the the catalyst. You're the cause for it, it going bad. It's yeah. so. I don't know if that's just semantics, if it's, you know, just... I think we're both, you know, we both agree on this. There's no greater power. I mean, everyone who has any fucking sense at all knows that. Like, it's just (laughs) what we do. Like, what you do affects other people. If you're constantly fucking people over, that's bound to come back to you at some point. I mean, there are some people that just happen to get away with it and they, you know, somehow have you know, either the charisma to get out of those situations or they have, you know, just the good fortune. But yeah. for the most part, what you do put out there comes back to you because people notice what you're doing and why you're doing it and what your intentions are. And people kind of catch on eventually to who you are. You know, and I think that's sort of how that works. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, it makes a lot of sense that people who are... Uh, more prone to magical thinking, you know, would, would, would sort of stick a tag on that as that, oh, that's sort of, um, you know, that's evidence of a higher power or something. Where us logical people just go, oh, yeah, duh. Like A equals B, B equals C, therefore A equals C. You know, <laughs> whereas people who are into like, you know, sil- you know, simple syllogisms, but people who want to believe in magic, who believe in God and who believe in, fairy tales and shit like that, then they're more prone to just attach a sort of meaning, quote unquote, meaning to that, where people like us who just go, oh yeah, A equals B, B equals C, therefore A equals C, go, oh, okay. The, you know, the, the world has a sort of math to it. The world has a sort of logic to it. And uh, those people who recognize it just go, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then those people who it's, you know, it doesn't make sense to go, oh, that's fucking magic, you know, or that's God or whatever that is to them. But I the mean, world- arguably it, mm-hmm. it is the that idea of, of claiming that you're jinxed. Like right. everything you do in life right? Right? is because totally. of every failure <laughs> is because of a jinx. It's not it's not because I'm a loser. Right. It, it, it's not that I'm an alcoholic. Exactly. And I'm the literal reason why the, my world crumbles around me. It's because I'm jinxed because right. I stole that fish that day and that old lady jinxed my ass. It wasn't me. Exactly. It, it's a way of, of, <laughs> of pushing off ownership of exactly. your own pathetic life yes. onto something else. <laughs> it's nice that that we can openly sort of talk about it and recognize it and even use it to our advantage. Mm-hmm. It's essential um, if, if if that's what you're into, and I certainly am, um, to manipulate your surroundings and other people specifically. Mm-hmm. To, and you can't, you can't really believe in a jinx or mm-hmm. in a curse, for example, in the, in the way that the majority of human beings do when you when you see the world like we do as Satanists, you recognize it as you know. You, yes, you are exerting your will to change things to uh, literally affect their lives indirectly, but you're not out there like a puppet master pulling yeah. strings. Yeah. It, you know. And we don't actually fully understand why suggestion works so well. And we don't fully understand why when we curse someone, it works so effectively. Mm -hmm. But it's not that important either. Like, Mm -hmm. we don't have to really break it down. But I think 
I think one thing that is, is pretty clear is that if, if, you're, if you're open with this understanding, um, the way that Satanists see magic lesser and greater, mm -hmm. if you're open to the idea of suggesting and manipulating other human beings, then you're that much harder to manipulate because your eyes are open. Yeah, exactly. Like you're aware. Yeah, it's like these people who go out and there's like they're like yeah, everywhere I go I just attract trouble, and they <laughs> never stop to think like maybe it's me who is <laughs> trouble, and I just I think it is you, Aaron. It's me. It's definitely yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Let's. Why don't we go to the next song? Because we're. Just I'm sorry. Playing. Yes. So, all right. This one is Gabriel Brown, who most people. May never have heard of. I've never heard of this. Oh, nice. It's good. It's really good. Mm hmm. Gangs is out on me. <laughs> I can't have no luck at all. So, yeah, this is basically the idea that he's, you know, no personal responsibility whatsoever. It's like somebody's. This is happening to me. I, somebody's doing this to me. But it's so good. It's so great. Yeah. He's, a, he's got such an evocative voice, you know. It almost reminds me of um, Robert Pete Williams. <laughs> yes. I know, right? Yeah? <laughs> good? I'm too drunk to think of the name, but just sort of a, like a... Oh, that was great. I didn't happen to be. <laughs> I didn't happen to be. He has a great cadence. I love yeah, that. Yeah, isn't it great? That's what I love, you know. He was discovered by um, <laughs> Zora Neale Hurston, who was a, she, most famous, I guess, for writing that book, uh, Their, Their Eyes Were Watching God. But she was also a folklorist from Florida, and she was really interested in folk music and got really involved with, like, ethnomusicology and studying and and this guy gabriel brown was discovered by her which is fucking great she's fucking such a hero and only you know people only mostly know her from her um fiction writing but their eyes are watching god is a pretty phenomenal book you know if if anyone's looking for something to read <laughs> What's reading again? Uh, it's when you scan like letters that make sense, like words, and then words make sentences, and sentences make paragraphs. Is, is there this, a movie about it? Is this ringing a bell at all? <laughs> <laughs> is that on TV? Is that on Channel 4? Yeah, just Google it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jinx is on So awesome. yeah, I can't have no luck at all because somebody stole it. It's basically... <laughs> that was great. Well, well, how can uh, how can people find you online? Well, you know, I'm all over the internet on Facebook at Down to the Crossroads. Please like us. We have 422 likes. I want 666 by the end of the year. So like Whoa. that, Down to the Crossroads. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter at Chelsea Girl 19, and I'm gonna be yeah. I'm definitely gonna put up the playlist. Eventually, I'm sure I'll figure out how to do the iTunes playlist, but does anyone care? They actually, they don't want to buy these tunes. They just want to hear them. Do. So These are amazing. <laughs> I hope so, too. So, I buy them every single week. So I'm going to put up the Spotify list, hopefully the 8-tracks list, which has some extra tracks on it, and mm -hmm. um, the iTunes. So stay tuned. Yeah. Down on the crossroads. Yeah. Facebook. Well, thanks again. I think that was, uh, it's, an, it's an amazing segment, and I'm really, really excited that uh, you bring it to us every month. Thanks. I'm happy Genuinely. to do it. I look forward to it every month. Like? Like my like, period, yes. I was going to go. Yeah, there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Adam. We're sympathetic. We're on the same page. It's right there. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. That's going to do it for another show. I hope you enjoyed it. We would love to hear from you. Visit the website 9centspodcast.com and send your correspondence to info at 9centspodcast.com or go on down to Down to the Crossroads on Facebook and send a message there or tweet 
Chelsea Girl 19. Let us know of any suggestions, critiques, corrections, or general comments you might have. You can visit, <clears throat> excuse me, you can visit the Satan Net, Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, or MySpace page. Too much pumpkin. <laughs> I'm turning into a pumpkin. You are. Uh, Twitter or MySpace page for nine cents and get updated on weekly topics. Download the show Monday nights via my RSS feed. Found at nine cents podcast.com. We're also on Last FM, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. So look for us there. And remember, you can always subscribe to 9 Cents via iTunes by searching 9 Cents. Don't forget to leave mm. a rating or comment. It's actually been a while since I've gotten a rating or comment on What's iTunes. up, fuckers? I know, right? Right? You send me correspondence, go click a button. <laughs> do, do, me a, do me a solid. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the Church of Satan, visit churchofsatan.com and pay attention at the end of this month, sometime <laughs> around All Hallows Eve. Spooky. Something's going to be happening over there. <laughs> it's all for you, so, Damien. Check it out. The only way that this podcast is going to continue to exist is if you continue to tell someone else other than you about Nine Cents and your imaginary friend. Don't tell them there either. <laughs> uh, share Nine Cents. I appreciate every single new listener I get and then when they drop off two weeks later. So let's keep keep churning it, people. Help spread the word. And once again, thank you for joining me and Aaron. And as always, I'm your host, Adam Campbell, and being joined by... Aaron. Aaron. (laughs) Until next week, hail Satan. Hail Satan.